common reed is a perennial grass typically associated with wetlands, but may be found spreading in drier habitats adjacent to wetlands. It's been suggested there are at least three common reed lineages currently present in North America. Subspecies Americanus is native to North America and is widespread throughout the continent. The Gulf Coast type is present across the southern USA from California to Florida and into Mexico and Central America and is expanding outward, but its nativity is presently unclear. The name subspecies Berlandieri has been suggested for this lineage. The third lineage is likely native to Europe, Asia, and Africa, but was introduced to North America in the late 1700s or early 1800s as a contaminant in ship's ballast and has since become invasive. The name subspecies Australis is sometimes used for this lineage, but that name is not always accepted. The introduced lineage is established throughout North America, but is especially problematic in the East, where it is displacing the native lineage. It has recently been confirmed in the Northeast that all native and introduced lineages can hybridize. This video pertains primarily to the introduced lineage, with emphasis given on ways to distinguish the introduced and native lineages. The Gulf Coast type closely resembles the introduced lineage and is not addressed specifically in this video. The native and introduced lineages of common reed overlap extensively in their habitat associations. Both are found in or along tidal and non-tidal wetlands, inland marshes, lakes, rivers, and irrigation canals. The introduced lineage is more likely to be found in disturbed sites and where nutrient inputs may be high, such as along roadsides, construction sites, near agricultural fields, or near developed shorelines. The introduced common reed displaces the native common reed and other native plant species, reduces wildlife food and shelter, blocks access to water, increases the potential for fire, alters the hydrology of wetlands, and negatively impacts juvenile fish. Common reed is an upright perennial grass with a deep and extensive root system with both rhizomes and stolons. Stolons are most typically produced during times of low water and reach lengths of up to 43 feet. The introduced common reed typically forms denser stands than the native lineage, and its stands are more likely to include dead stems from the previous year's growth. Seeds germinate in spring in moist soil or water up to two inches deep. Stems emerge throughout spring and early summer and may require two to four years before flowering, though some flower within one year. Stems typically grow five to 15 feet tall, are unbranched and are hollow between the nodes. Little black spots are sometimes found on the stems of the native common reed, which are caused by native fungus that is not yet adapted to the introduced lineage. However, the introduced lineage can sometimes have sooty mold. Leaves of both lineages are alternate. They have flat blades up to 20 inches long and are one to one and a half inches wide at their widest point. They have smooth margins, sometimes with fine hairs, and have conspicuous parallel veins on their upper surface. Leaves of the introduced common reed tend to be bluish green, while those of the native lineage are often a lighter yellow green, though color differences can be difficult to detect unless they're side by side. The leaf sheaths of the introduced lineage grip more tightly to the stem and are often persistent over winter, while the sheaths of the native lineage are looser and peel back, eventually dropping off the stem once the leaf dies, especially at the lower nodes. For the native lineage, lower stem sections exposed after sheaths drop off tend to be more reddish than the lower stem nodes of the introduced type. Leaf nodes of both lineages have long whitish hairs that fall off as leaves mature. Both lineages also have ligules rimmed by a fringe of tiny hairs. The ligules of the introduced common reed are generally less than one millimeter long, while those of the native lineage are longer than one millimeter, but more likely to shred and fray by midsummer. Flowering occurs in late summer when dense flower clusters resembling plumes six to 16 inches long are produced at the ends of stem tips. Flower clusters are often purple when young, turning straw colored at maturity. They are highly branched and contain numerous spikelets, each containing several individual florets with fluffy, silky hairs. Measuring the size of the bracts, called glooms, at the base of the spikelet is another comparison tool useful for differentiating the native and introduced lineages. Upper glooms of the native common reed are generally more than six millimeters long, while the introduced are less than six millimeters. Lower glooms of the native common reed are generally more than four millimeters long, while the introduced are less than four millimeters. Mature plants produce 2,000 seeds annually on average, though seed germination rates are typically low. Stems and leaves usually die in the fall and re-sprout from roots, rhizomes, and stolons in spring. 
The introduced lineage often begins growing earlier in the season and continues later in the fall compared to the native. Common reed patches may live for several decades, though no individual part lives longer than eight years. Many large grasses in North America have features that resemble common reed. Some are readily differentiated by being bunch grasses instead of growing linear with rhizomes and stolons. The exotic rhizomatous giant reed is perhaps most similar, but differs in that it often grows several feet taller. It has inflorescences up to three feet long and its leaves clasp the stem. The most difficult plants to differentiate are the native and introduced Eurasian lineages of common reed. Because so many features overlap, DNA analyses are the most accurate for telling these lineages apart. Where DNA testing is not possible, it's essential that multiple features are used for differentiation, rather than just one or few, before making a lineage determination.